Hello my friends, welcome back to the channel, welcome to my Horizon Zero Dawn full blind playthrough on the PlayStation 5. We are playing on ultra hard difficulty. Alright, I can't tell you what part number this is going to be or episode, I would probably guess <laughs> it might be, I don't know, part 94 or 95. However, um, we're recording this before Looming Shadow. Um, so in case you don't know guys... I finished up the Frozen Wilds, so we took down all of the Fire Claws remaining. I think there was three left. I had a really great time with that, and we did a bonus Daemonic Thunderjaw battle as well. So, in the meantime, what I'm going to do now, I'm actually going to record this before we go for the ending, the Looming Shadow. However, <laughs> I'm going to post this after the ending i don't know if that makes any sense but uh basically i just want to kind of um in the playlist i just want to get straight into the end game now because we are there this video guys is only optional you don't have to watch this if you don't want to um so you can click off now <laughs> if you're not interested but this is purely law and picking up um artifacts i may try and speak to some npcs as well i don't know we'll, we'll try that um okay guys we need to visit ross's grave as well so let's do that and i can't remember where he is actually does he come on the map it's been a while i haven't been here for ages guys but it would be good to see ross because i don't know what lies up ahead um uh wait what <laughs> sorry guys i don't know where he is okay i think he built all this alone he has to be here so many memories oh my god guys i'm so sorry okay one second let me do that that'll probably be a bit easier no, oh he's out me. here okay my bad there's nothing for me here anymore all right here we go guys A lot has happened. So I. <laughs> I went inside the mountain. Do you remember the night before the proving? The final lesson you taught me? You said I needed to serve a purpose bigger than myself. Well, it. <laughs> couldn't get much bigger. It's the same purpose that drove Elizabeth and Gaia. When they were willing to die for. So yeah. I'll do it. Give myself to that. For Elizabeth. And Gaia. And for you. I've got what I need to destroy Hades. The Master Override. Now all I have to do is drive it into Hades' skull. So no problem there. The final battle will be fought at Meridian. Hades will come for the Spire, and I'll be ready. I found out how Elizabeth died. She sacrificed herself, as you might expect. Said something about going home. I wonder where that was for her. If I ever find out, I'd like to go there. See it myself, assuming I actually survived the battle at Meridian, of course. Which, let's face it, is... well... Who knows? Well, I'll, um... I'll try to come back if I can, but... I... I guess this... This might be it. Thank you, Rost. Thank you for everything. Damn, guys, that is sad. Um, I'm just wondering why Aloy didn't talk about Cyan. Um, and what we encountered up in the carts, you know, but it's all right, uh, guys. 
oh yeah by the way in this episode i am not gonna fight anyone <laughs> at all i don't want to fight I, I there's gonna be plenty of fighting i'm sure in the looming shadow all right what i want to do though i can't remember where odd grata is i want to see if i can speak to odd grata i'll try and find her myself guys and i, I have a suspicion she might be here give me a sec well she was up high on a mountain wasn't she she might be here all right guys let me go find her i'll be back with you shortly hey guys <laughs> just a quick one my goodness i got lost i got lost i just could not find her however it looks like odd grat is there listen this is nothing special but i'm just wondering if we can talk to her at all because we're about to uh you know go into looming shadow anyway oh maybe we can't talk to her oh you're kid guys you're kidding me no what a waste of time guys this took i went every i just kept on putting my flag here and there i went up this mountain there was nothing here at all and i thought she was up here somewhere so i was trying to climb up this this mountain peak but that was clearly not the right way and now that i've come here she cannot interact with aloy anymore unless we wait for a day let me try that guys i'll skip ahead uh just quickly before i do that so today is going to be just law um i'm going to read out all the vantage points once i collect them all also the banuk artifact story i'm going to read that out to you guys as well and we're going to collect every single uh metal flower uh vessel and we're going to sell them at meridian and talk to all the merchants there as well anyway i'll see you in a bit hey guys we are back okay i lost my patience i don't want to talk to grata anymore so whatever <laughs> um right we're going to go for this vantage point i'll just show you where it is so we're still back in Nora lands and it's this one here okay now guys if i'm not mistaken this could be where we fought our first corrupted zone oh my god i couldn't even tell you what episode that was that was probably 90 episodes ago i can't remember guys but the old old memories are flooding in <laughs> all right where are we there you are okay check it out um how do we oh easy very easy okay here we go another message from the ancient past okay air combat academy guys i'll play what we're going to do is we're going to play everything and then i'll just read out the entire story in order okay so what's next remember this is not a fighting action-packed episode it's just purely just to finish up the entire uh well the entire map as far as much as i can where else can i go here all right there's one here um i think there's four metal flowers one two three and there's one right over here somewhere okay so let's grab this other vantage um okay i'll see you over there guys hey guys we're back okay I teleported in and it's over here awesome i don't think this is complicated to get up to at all all right here we go um how do i huh oh okay <laughs> all right let's grab that okay explore museum oh i didn't check the thing oh crap i'm gonna go back there guys <laughs> anyway this is it i'll play the recording like i said we'll do that later okay i'll see you back here all right guys we're back okay let's have a look where's the thing oh check it out oh my god oh that's insane guys and what does it look like now why does it have to be night time guys i was right this is where we fought um corrupted scrappers and watchers that was actually our first ever corrupted zone so this is it let's have a look at that one more time air combat academy all right so we'll look at that again um when i read out the story okay what's next so we need to get that looks really difficult to get up to so we'll grab this uh, male flower here let's have a look at the collectibles thing actually 
Okay, so we've got two metal vessels, one more vantage point, and one, two, three metal flowers. All right, guys, I'll see you. I'll see you over here. Hey, guys, we are back. Okay, is this it? It is excellent. <laughs> okay, this wasn't... I got worried. I thought this was going to be a very complicated one to get to. It's not. It's just here on the map. You teleport in and just follow this up here, really. And uh, that's pretty much it. I wonder what's this? Out of curiosity. Anyway, right, let's grab that. Patterns on this flower are... Okay, so we'll read out some poetry to you guys. <laughs> oh, very short. <laughs> or orchid breathing incest in <laughs> sorry i said the wrong word there back in incense into butterfly wings okay that's super short all right so we got three more so where else can we go now okay there's quite a lot of collectibles up here so we'll start here i guess we'll get the smell of flower there's two vessels also guys i'm sure there's going to be some data points that I never saw before. Anyway, we'll try this first. We'll go up here. We'll go up here. And then we'll go up here. <laughs> That's the plan. All right, see you there in a minute. Hey, guys. Okay, we're very close. Very, very close. Okay, sorry. I'm looking out for... Oh, whoa. What's this? What the heck? I'm not going to fight them because I refuse to. <laughs> I'm retired from fighting. I I don't understand. Oh, I think I know what this is, guys. I think I know what this is. You remember that quest with Val and... Oh, I don't remember what it's called. Sona and, the, you know, we were getting revenge for all the Nora that was slaughtered at the Proving. I think those are the machines left over uh, and they're still there. All right, where is this? Oh my goodness, I had it. I, I'm sorry, guys, I got distracted. One second. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's right there. Okay, still can't see any data points, which is sad. All right, Ancient Vessel KZ, or KZ, as we say in the UK. <laughs> All right, shows a threatening red-eyed visage. What is that? Huh, anyway, one more to go. So what's next? We'll grab the small flower. So we need to go straight ahead. I just want to have a quick scan here. If any data points. Uh, guys, by the way, listen, if I had time, if I had lots and lots of time, I'll be scouring the map and, you know, looking for these data points actively. I just can't, guys. I work a full-time job. I mean, it's really late for me now. <laughs> I'm just so tired. I just want to go to bed. But, um... Playing games is how I unwind. But if I had more time, I would be, you know, spending a few hours just looking for data points. But unfortunately, I can't do that right now. <laughs> oh, here we go. Check it out. Metal flower. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. Anyway, whatever. Right. Okay, here we go. More poetry. Summer grasses, all that remains of soldiers' dreams. We're nearly done. That's exciting. So we've got two more. And whoops. Okay, so I need to go here. Just having a look. I'm looking at my mini map to see if a collectible, or sorry, a data point symbol comes up. But not so much. Okay, never mind. <laughs> anyway, let's keep going. Hey, ball. I don't need to kill you anymore. I'm trying to jump on top of it. <laughs> Gosh, guys, I just remember, like, farming so many animals to make potions. But I don't need to do that anymore. I just buy them from the merchant. Um. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. All right, guys, all the vessels are done. Yay. Okay, bears the legend USRC. United States Robot Command. Oh, yes, that's that's what it is, guys. Insane. Okay. All right, guys, there has to be data points here. My goodness, there has to be. I've not been here before. Oh, you piece of shit. 
All right, I know I said I wouldn't fight anyone, but guys, I haven't got a choice. Right, I'm going to check that petrol station thingy. We'll have a look at that. That is a petrol station, or it used to be one. In America, you must call it a gas station. <laughs> All right. All right, let me... Oh, do I want to kill him? Guys, it's only because they're in my way. That, there's no choice. <laughs> Die, bitch. Oh, crap. There's a shit ton of them alerted. Now they're hunting me. Okay, let's be quick about this. Okay, just want to have a look around and check it out. I was right. Check it out. Okay, let's read that real quick. No, highlight. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, there's enemies right next to me. Okay, all the same. So, text, data points, world. Okay, here we go. Personal log, user. 67681 I'm so sick of these robot battle hollows How many of these things can you watch Before you realise that every single episode Is exactly the same You show up on the battlefield You watch a bunch of uh, Thrasher bots tear each other up You choose which core You're going to root for Explosions, explosions, explosions And then it's over Am I the idiot? Everybody else seems to love this stuff uh, don't know about you. That actually sounds amazing. <laughs> don't know why he's, you can't please everybody, guys. That's just the way it is. <laughs> oh crap! Okay, I think some enemies are coming. However, where are we going next? Well, we can open this for a start. And could there be any more? There is another day point, guys. The symbols come up. Where though? So I'm approaching slowly. There, there, there. Guys, check it out. China sick. What is that? Right, personal log, user 3477895. I have to be honest. I miss... Sorry, I'm going to butcher this. I apologize, guys. Guangdong. Is that how you say it? Guang, Guangdong already. I had a purpose there. I was, I was busy all the time. Nobody here seems to get it. Sandy and Vanessa took me out last week. Welcome home, I guess. Some guy at the bar freaks out when he overhears how I just got back. Acts like I was living underground with mole people or something. Like I should be ashamed, I actually wanted to have a job and work for a living. Ugh. Guess it's reverse culture shock, or maybe I should just go back. I wonder, is there more data points here? Okay, I'm looking for the diamond square box symbol yeah you piss off you bastard scrapper <laughs> i really hate them guys guys i swear this wait 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 am i right am i right yes i'm right check it out mexico all right here we go personal log user 88672821 crowther is going to kill me Got buzzed this morning, notifying me that Metallurgic had occupied two of our Mexican, sorry, Mexico Helium 3 facilities. No declaration of intent, no warning, just bam. So of course, the blame's on me. I could file a grievance with the IACC, but that only covers the company's ass, <laughs> or ass, not mine. Could get Great Lakes interdiction on the line. Maybe clean up this mess by Monday, but my line of credit strained as it is. How did they slip in past the sniffers? Where where were our thrashers? It's bad. So bad. <laughs> okay. Guys, there's a shit ton of rec record I'm not recording some um, data points here. Come on, how it has to be more, come on. Guys, maybe where the scrappers were, perhaps. But do I care? I do care about the data points, but... No, hold on, hold on. If I go up further, that's where we rescued... Not rescued, we destroyed that Eclipse camp, I think. No, it's here. There could be some stuff here, guys. I'm gonna have a look. If there's nothing, if there's nothing, then I'll just edit it out. 
Hey guys, just a quick one. I discovered a campfire. We're actually quite close to where, you know, that big stadium. Um, I don't remember what the quest was called, but I haven't been here before. So I'm just having a look and seeing if there's any, any data points. And if there isn't, no worries. I'll just meet you up where the metal flower is. I can't see anything. I bet I've missed, uh, guys, I'm missing so many, I'm pretty sure. Ah, all right, never mind. Okay, no worries. Okay, I'll meet you where the metal flower is. Hey guys, we are back. Okay, again, I've never been here before and this looks insane, man. Check this out. Never been here before. Look at these machines, uh, meaning all of these tanks so wow this was a must have been a huge battle here let me just take care of this freaking sawtooth um you can't remember i'm trying to save resources as well because that wasn't a warning okay no i need a metal vessel so i don't want to keep using my bombs guys <laughs> What the hell? What just happened there? Oh, wow. Oh, crap. Yeah, there's me saying I'm not going to uh, <laughs> fight any machines, but no choice, really. I mean, look, this is new, uh, a new area, so I don't know. <laughs> not my fault. Okay, guys, give me a sec. Let's have a look around. But this is insane, man. Okay, so we got three tanks. Uh, four tanks. I'm going to have a look around. There's like what looks like a cutoff of a... Oh, wow, that's a motorway, isn't it? Let me start there. Hey guys, I did a little circuit here, unfortunately, and I couldn't find a way to get up here, but possibly right at the end. I'll give it a try, but we'll do that later. I'll do that in a minute. All right, let's grab this uh, flower though. I'm still looking out <laughs> on the mini map above. Just right, here we go. Here's some metal flower. So we'll grab this one. Okay, one more metal flower, guys. We're nearly there. Okay, let's read this out. Sharing tree shade with a butterfly friends in a previous life cool so one more vantage point and one last metal flower guys we're nearly there okay give me a moment let me look around hey guys uh someone's getting attacked <laughs> so i want to try and help him if i can but i can't even get out of it oh my god i can't even leave it guys oh no did i person die oh well never mind <laughs> i tried guys i tried oh that's he whoa 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 a banuk wanderer guys what the hell is he doing all the way out here so this is where i found him well i didn't find him i just knew he was here he was getting attacked by this watcher i don't know man that's weird <laughs> all right i'll see you in a bit guys Hey guys, we're back. Okay, couldn't find anything. I looked everywhere around in this area. You know what? I probably am missing a lot of um, data points. There's another sawtooth there. Don't worry, I'm not going to mess with him. I'm just saying. There are these buildings though. Oh my god, guys. I really want to I want to check it out, but it's all the way here. Oh, it wasn't what I intended to do today, but... I'll do this myself. Um, if I find anything, I'll let you know. Uh, hey, guys. Okay, this is a bit worrying. I was swimming towards there. There's shit tons of snap moors, and I think... I think they're corrupted. I've never fought a corrupted snap moor before. Oh, crap. <laughs> I don't know. Do I want to do this, guys? I mean, look, we can take them. I'm sure we can take them. But, <laughs> but I'm a little bit kind of worried. One sec, let me just 
Let me just make sure they are corrupted. My goodness. Yeah, they're, they're corrupted. Okay, look, guys, we can take them. It shouldn't be an issue. But I do want to have a look at this place. Why is it out here? Why are there, why are there buildings out here? And why are there stat moors? Hmm? <laughs> it could be some collectibles or something, or data points. We'll see. We'll see. All right, let's get started, I guess. This isn't a right outfit for this, though. Um... Uh, wow, we didn't even take any damage there. They're angry. Okay, I know they're corrupted. I'm trying to set one on fire to see if it does quite a bit of damage, but... Wait, wait, it's nearly there, nearly there. Oh my god, jeez! Really? Is this what we're doing today? Okay, good, he's on fire. Now, is that doing a lot of damage to him? It does look like it, so may as well. Oh, crap. Okay, I'm going to switch to the Banuk Ice Master thing in just a minute. Oh, my God. <laughs> Two hours later. Hey guys, I killed quite a lot of these snap moors. Um, some old snap moors just kind of res just spawned in, and it's very awkward to fight here. It's it's really bad. I think it, look, I think the developers don't want me to come here, but it's making me want to explore this even more. I I don't know what to do, guys. I didn't expect this at all. <laughs> oh my god, ran out of freaking arrows. I'm running out of blaze as well, but um Oh, I don't know what to do. Look, look, check it out guys. Two more have spawned in. I swear I killed about five of them. And I can't really fight it. Wait, I'm trying to get that sack. How did I miss? Really? <laughs> Good. All right, guys, I'm going to swim across. If I find anything, I'll let you know. Oh, shit. Oh, I can't enter it. Damn it, guys. Uh, guys, I'm out of here. <laughs> it, was, it was nice visiting this place, but I don't think I can go any further. So I'll see you later. Right, we need... Uh, let's have a look at this together, actually. How do I do this again? All right, all collectibles. Okay, so... We come out of this. All right, that's all done. Okay, one vantage point there. One metal flower here. Um, anything else? No, I think we're good. So it's just these two. So I'll see you. Let's try this one first. I'll get a vantage point here. I'll see you there in a minute. Hey, guys, we're back. Okay. I think it's up here. Guys, this is where we fought the storm birds. I can't remember what the quest again was called. Um... Guy Prime. I just don't remember what the quest name is. Where is this? I'm getting close, but I don't know how to get it. Should be some handholds. It has to be. Could it be up here? <laughs> Damn it, guys. All right, just give me a moment. Let me try and find it. Oh, hey, guys. Okay, I found some handholds, <laughs> which is very useful. Okay. So let's go up this way, I guess. All right, guys, I think we're here. Well, nearly, nearly here. All 
All right, it ha has to be right. It has to be up here. Check it out. And there's handholds there, ledges. I can I can see them. All right, let's climb these. There it is. Okay, let's keep going. And here we are. Voila. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Guys, this is... Oh, it's very unclear though. I can't really see this properly. Um, no, that's really unclear, guys. I can't see that properly. One second. Yeah, this is a little better. But anyway, can you see that? This is where they're building Gaia Prime. <laughs> that is insane, guys. All right, let's have a look at it now. So this, oh, well, again, very kind of blurry, but all right, whatever. We're very, very close to reading this all out. So that's actually the whole purpose of this. Guys, I'll see you down here. And we're going to get this, I think, is the final collectible. It is. I'll see you there, guys. What? 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 Hey! Oh, my. Wow, guys. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay, I I just loaded in. Oh, please, long leg, you piece of shit. Oh, my God, are you kidding me, guys? I, I can't believe this is happening. I, I can't believe it. Oh, my God. Okay, I think we're going to need something stronger then. <laughs> uh, I will use my shield weaver, guys. Okay, so plan is... Use that. Freeze this bitch. Oh, no. Leave me alone, no, long leg. Oh, you fucker. Oh, my God, guys. We'll take care of the long leg first. Or maybe not. <laughs> Whoever gets ice first. Wait, why do you lose her uh, ice? Wow, guys, what is going on here? All right, all right, enough of this bullshit. I didn't come here for you. I just literally loaded in. Do not hit me. Oh, you bastard. Oh, you motherfucker. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh my god, I cannot believe this. Guys, I am furious right now, honestly. This wasn't part of the plan. I, I can't believe I can't even get a shot from this fucking Oh my god. I'm so sorry, Moaning. <laughs> right, let's just kill this long leg. Because of you, I couldn't kill the behemoth, and I was so close to doing so. And behind me there's some snap balls. Right, good. All right, he's out of the way now, guys. You know what? Let me break in. No, I can't because I haven't got any mods for it. I was going to say I'm going to use my ice bow, but... Yeah, you know what, guys? Sorry, sorry. One sec. I want to use my ice bow. I, I can't believe this has happened. I really can't. Okay. Oh, crap. Whoa! Jesus! <laughs> no, get out of there! Oh no, get out of there! Oh no, oh no, guys! <laughs> Arsehole! How, guys, how did I miss? Guys, how did I miss? Yeah, of course, yep, yeah, you do that. You stupid bastard behemoth. Oh my god, guys. All right, now, please, for the love of God, <laughs> just let me kill you. Oh, my God, get up, Aloy. Where the hell am I? Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Get out of there. And before he de-ices. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, what a weird fucking day, man. Honestly. 
Oh, I don't even care about those coils. Guys, that was so bizarre. It really was. That's a lot of coils, though. Anyway, sorry about that. <laughs> Jeez, whiz. Okay. All right, that was a bit of an annoyance, but it's okay. I just want this freaking metal flower. Wow, so bizarre. And there's snap moss there as well. Don't really want to run, run into them. It, it's more of a time thing, guys. I just want to kind of get through this as smoothly as possible. What's this? Oh, nothing. I'll meet you over there, guys. Hey, guys, we're back. Okay, looks like it's up here. I'm still being hunted down by these uh, snap moss. I think it's here. Well... Oh, here we go. Check it out. Guys, I think this is it. Uh, by the way, in case you're wondering why am I not getting trophies, this isn't my video game, guys. This is my younger brother's. He's left me his SSD before he moved away. So that's why I'm playing this for you. But he's 100% of this entire game already. So that's why. <laughs> I don't know how to reset trophies or anything. So, guys, very final Metal Flower. So I'll read some poetry out to you. Here you go. I saw a mountain, its haughty peak, and bunched spine vying with the worlds on high, deflecting every salvo of the wind, and shouldering the strait from the sky, brooding above the dunes like some great thinker, considering days to come as nights go by, with black clouds wrapped about it for a turban, and bangs of red head lightning in its face, and through the night, that tongueless mountain uttered marvelous things awesome guys i think we freaking did it now we have done it okay so what i mean by that is we've got all the collectibles we're gonna go to uh, meridian now and just meet up with all those merchants i've never spoken to them guys the speciality merchants because i think one of you guys told me oh hold on um sorry this is for eddie freaking munson he told me where the banu people are one second uh the three hunters that we met in frozen wilds and he said they're near day tower right <laughs> okay i hope they're here okay guys I'll, I'll meet you down here hey guys okay we're in day tower or getting close to day tower but i don't know where right i can't remember what your message said but you said it's not in day tower it's near there it's in the surrounding area that's what you said <laughs> right so i'm gonna look around okay possibilities we can go through this gate and look around this way because i know there's a pathway going down here but i'm gonna start here first so i'm quiet i'm just trying to find these dudes oh check it out there's a supply box I didn't even know about this. Come on, where are you? They're called... Ne Whoa, guys, there's a thing here. Oh, my God. There's a data point I didn't even know about, guys. They're necessities. That's awesome. All right, nice. Oh, you're kidding. There's still three more? Oh, anyway. I'll try and find them, guys. I'll try. Okay, the claim. Again, if you don't want to hear all this, you can skip ahead. But then again, why are you here? This is an optional video. So if you're here, tough shit. You're going to listen to this. <laughs> right, the claim, scan glyphs. A guide to the claim by the well-traveled Aram. Often, I fling open the windows of my villa, not only to partake of the scents and sights of the city, but to hear the questions on the streets. Equally often, I hear asked aloud what to make of these outsiders, these Osaram who are suddenly our allies or even neighbours. Why do they eat as they do, argue as they do? What is the matter of their heady scent? Why are they always drinking? <laughs> like a ray of the sun amid the darkness, a question is best followed to its source. So for the benefit of the inquisitive, I contrived to join a trading caravan to the claim, at least as far as the closest village beyond the break walls. The claim, it is a muted land where fire smoke hangs heavy in the air among the tall, thin trees, where the ground has not been dug up in the Osaram's ceaseless search for metal. 
It is cased in frost, and beneath the frost, yet more frost, before stony soil. And west, soot. Everywhere, soot all pervading. Though I had worn my sturdiest travel silks, keeping them on soils proved impossible. Noticing my discomfort, some Osram washerwomen women offered their services, but seeing the shade of the water in their tubs, I declined. <laughs> Indeed, regard for cleanliness is not an Osram virtue. Despite its protective walls of piled slate and slouched around stone huts, the village struck me as overly exposed to the element. The chief elements in the claim being a cold, oily rain and hoarfrost. Even so, the open fires hissed and spat and burned on, and the mood was bustling and lively, much as you might find in an outbuilding for livestock, for example, what I will endure to bring the light of knowledge to the folk of my tribe. The Osaram have no priests or kings, and spit at the mention of such titles, but they defer to the counsel of their wise men, the village eldermen, it seems each settlement elects such men for the purpose of unceasing argument. From dawn until long into the night, they shout over each other on matters of policy and taxation. Come the next morning, a line of villagers will already have formed for the privilege of arguing back. I joined such a line for several hours while children squealed, birds squawked, and hammering, a cursed, endless hammering, <laughs> echoed over the trampled straw and rain-filled cart ruts. Finally, I was permitted to face the three aldermen and deliver my question. I asked for their opinion on the peace between our tribes, and Sun King of Odd's offer of welcome in Meridian itself. Readers, I say, asked, but the matter was not so simple as the Osaram erupted into insults and arguments even before the words had finished leaving my lips. I found myself talked over, shouted down, subjected to seemingly unconnected abuse, and it was only when I raised my voice in return, an invigorating experience, that I was grudgingly answered. <laughs> okay, Their opinions are muddled and mixed, to say the least, and I will not profane this parchment by transcribing the words used to express them. Suffice it to say that they see the benefit of free trade between our tribes, and indeed have flourished from it. After long years of war, however, it seems few Osram that trade outside the claim return their taxes, or even return at all. Uh, the Eldermen believe they are stolen away by a manner of living that is downright Karja, a phrase they punctuate by spitting upon the floor. <laughs> In return, I suggested that their mistrust and fear of a civilized way of life was positively Osram. I could not bring myself to spit indoors. This caused great commotion, after which I was bodily carried from the uh, building upon the shoulders of my hosts and deposited in the midst of a coming of age celebration. <laughs> not for a man, but for some new manner of device. I awoke on a cart, arriving at Pitchcliffe. <laughs> my throat was hoarse, my arms numbed from accepting countless challenges to wrestle, and the taste of an alcohol much like machine oil was still on my tongue. You must have had a great time, guys. My head ached as if split down the centre. Truly, I had risked my life in search of an answer, and is there more to the Osram character than brawling, drinking, and shouting? Simply put, dear reader, there is not. <laughs> but let us hope that the Elderman's fears will be proven true, and in time, the sun's light and meridian's glory can temper those these rough-hewn folk. <laughs> All right, excellent. Okay, guys, let's have a... Yeah, we'll, we'll continue on. So we're just going to look for... But would you look at that? There was actually a data point here, and I never knew. <laughs> All right. Okay, I... I can't see them, guys. I wish it was daytime. Why does it have to be nighttime? Why did he try to kill the sun? Oh wait, here? Yeah, maybe? No, <laughs> it's just a soldier. All right, guys. Look. Um. Wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. Just one more, th one more place. We need to check above. Okay. You know where we met that dude? Uh, that really bad dude. I can't remember his name. Oh, what is his name? I'm keeping my eyes open. 
I, I guys, I'm, my mind's gone blank. But the dude I was here, Assad. I can't remember, guys. What about you? The sun shines. On uh, he's sleeping. Whatever, guys. Um, look, I, I don't know. I can't remember. I put, I put it up on text, but I can't remember what um the dude's name. You gotta remember, this was weeks ago for me, as I've been recording and editing and you know whatever. It's been weeks ago. All right. Okay, so far no luck, but I'm gonna check around here, right? Or is this leading nowhere? What about here? No, we've already, we've already been here, so. All right, guys, this is my last stitch attempt. I'm just gonna <laughs> go around this way and we'll see. If there's nothing, there's nothing. There's nothing I can do. So, Eddie Freaky Munson, please let me know the exact location. Thanks for not spoiling it, and you allowed me to try and look for it myself, but I don't think I can find them. Wait, wait. You have to cut through the wires before you remove the part? Well, yes, obviously. Uh, see, you say it's obvious, but I don't understand why I just can't grab hold of the part and pull. He just explained that. I didn't hear it. I think I've got it, Otoo. Yes, guys, we found them. <laughs> it's them. I didn't want to talk over their dialogue, but check it out. It's them. Uh, who's Otar again? I don't remember. Oh, Otar. He, he's a dude that told us about um about the DLC in the first place. Anyway, let's talk to um these guys. I really missed them. This is awesome. So Nakoni's arrows made it to the Sundom. Aloy, we weren't sure we'd see you again. Oh, Aloy, you should see us in action. We're natural scavengers. Uh, didn't you just step on a long leg lens not two hours ago? <laughs> that wasn't my fault, all right? Otor didn't tell me those things were slippery. How was I to know? They're still doing this, huh? Oh, I don't think they'll ever stop. <laughs> oh, is that all? Oh, you started to miss us, didn't you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, is that all, guys? Okay, that's Urukai. Let's try... <laughs> To get tired of freezing your pretty braids off in the frigid lands. <gasps> That's so rude. I thought we were, you know, friends. <laughs> you know what I like about the Sundom? You can take a nap right out in the open. No tent. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll leave him to it. Can I not speak to you, though? Alter, whatever your name is. All right, guys, uh, it doesn't look like we can. That was awesome. We found a data point I wasn't expecting. I'm not going to search for any more data points, guys. That's not really the purpose of today. I'm going to meet you at Meridian. Let's trade in all of our collectibles. And then I'm going to start reading uh, those two stories. Uh, I'll see you there soon. Hey, guys, we are back. Okay, let's start with this merchant here. <laughs> it's so bizarre. I've never spoken to them, so I don't know anything about these... Um, speciality merchants but anyway this is the first one studious palace all right what did you want to discuss you're an outlander which is good but a nora which might be bad do you fear the ruins of the old ones like many in your tribe no although some can be dangerous then you may have come across what i seek in your travels have you found strange vessels emblazoned with symbols of the old ones they consist of a hollow cylinder with a crescent handle affixed at both ends if you bring me these vessels in sets of four i will gladly trade what i have for them well i've got them all <laughs> so that's easy okay so you're interested in the old ones more than interested i study every ancient artifact i can get my hands on but years of study have made me too comfortable at my desk. I can't even bear the sun if the truth be known. I don't know how I'll manage to take a partner. My family presses me for an heir. Uh, don't look at me. Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm not looking. In fact, my father already has someone he wants me to wed. She doesn't interest me. I wish I had a brother to carry this burden. I would rather be left to my precious little vessels. Okay. Ritual vessels. What sort of ritual were these vessels made for? I'm convinced they were used in conjunction with each other in sets. Some people believe they were used for tea ceremonies. Others think they held sacred essences and oils for worship. 
But I believe they were used for the solemn custom of shaving one's beard. <laughs> one for water, one for lotion, and so on. Each fluid in its special vessel, majestically applied to the face at each stage of the rite. It must have been breathtaking. But which vessel was used for which? I have to know. I have to continue my research. Are you sure people didn't just drink out of them? <laughs> drink? Out of such finely crafted earthenware? Don't be ridiculous. Guys, it, it really... It, this is very funny to me because... It, okay, look. You know stuff that we've also dug up and... Look, I guess we're quite advanced in terms of the scientific community. I mean, science is always constant learning and relearning things. You know, we've got a lot of things wrong. But it does raise the question, all these artifacts and stuff that we've interpreted as, oh, this could be, I don't know, it's a vase. Maybe it wasn't a vase. It could have been just something you drink from. Like, um, I, I don't know how to explain that, but if it's like um, it could have been something holy you know or a priest would use it but it could have just been a mug <laughs> so anyway you know what i'm getting at guys but it's just funny to me it's awesome yes yes trade quickly i have work to do screw you <laughs> anyway oh what's this buy special items no no i've done that already okay all right so here we go guys whoa okay angel vessel pharaoh arches okay i get it set one set two and set three i get it Okay, so that's set one, set two, and set three. <laughs> we actually did it, guys. Um, trade again? Yes, I'm happy to. No, no, there's nothing. Okay, we're done. That's it. I will leave you to the hunt. Be sure to delve into the ruins. Right, I don't think I've got. I, I reckon this is mods. I could be wrong. But I, whoa, nine skill points? Where did I get that from? <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, let me grab this. So that's all done again. I'm not going to get a trophy because I'm I'm not worthy. <laughs> all right, guys, let's have a look. I don't have any space in here. Shit. Oh, let me sort this out. Hey, guys, we're back. Okay, let's see what all the fuss was about. Uh, wait, they're all green, but we get a shit ton of shots. I like that. That's good. So we'll have a look at that in a second. Some more mod boxes and another 500 another 500 that's great very good to see all right let's have a look hey it's not showing me what the item is oh you've got to be kidding is this from him that's a green i don't want that oh green are you shitting me oh my god guys these are whack oh you've got to be kidding oh, i'm just gonna sell uh, sell all of these to a merchant oh please do not let this be a waste of time Oh my god, guys, are you kidding? So, our reward for getting all of this is bullshit. I, I don't believe this. I'm so disappointed. Gorilla Games, you suck. <laughs> that is awful, man. What kind of a freaking reward is that? Oh, well, whatever. Okay, guys, so that's that. Mark my so, I had to clear a shit ton of uh, mods anyway. But, all right, who's next? There should be... Um, Oh, a Banuke. Yeah, yeah, this one. I think. What does I say? Mystery. Mystery boxes? What is that? I've never spoken to this one. Who are you? All right. So, what's this? Blue Gleam? Are you kidding? Oh, holy shit. Guys, we can actually trade in lenses. Oh my god, I can't believe this. Guys, remember weeks and weeks ago, I asked about this. Somebody did say there's a speciality merchant. The stranding stuff, that was all um, from... Well, it's basically a shout-out to uh, he, Hideo Kojima, and it was for Death Stranding, I think. I hope I'm getting that right, but somebody li did leave in the comments. So I can trade this. Uh, it, it'll probably be shit, guys. I don't know. <laughs> All right, blue gleam box. What does that mean exactly? All right, let's do one. Let me just have a look. Okay, let's have a look at that. Okay. 
oh, we actually get blue gleam. However, I do need some more blue gleam anyway, because back in the warm socks, what? What the hell, guys? <laughs> okay, well, that's our award, apparently. Okay, I'll take that, obviously, but I, three metal shards. Jesus. <laughs> Guys, this is a pile of shit. Uh, okay, I'll come back to him. I'm going to complete this. Um, obviously, look, I'm posting this video after the ending, but I'm about to do the ending. Does that make any sense? I know it sounds a bit weird, but just trust me. <laughs> okay, well, who's next? Okay, artifact collectibles. This has to be... And uh, who are you? Machine resources flower flower collectibles let's go there i'll check the other ones out afterwards we'll do that later i have a matter of grace and beauty i would like to discuss with you right trade of kadif what did you want to talk about you were an outlander no an adventurer i used to be one myself i admit i miss the beguiling colors of the wilds speaking of which I wonder if you've come across a very special kind of flower. It's made of metal, like a machine. Other blossoms grow around them in amazing patterns. These gleaming beauties are very much in demand among my clients. If you bring me some, I have valuables to trade for them. Right, more about you. You said you were an adventurer. Just so. The nobles of Meridian crave flowers for their balconies and gardens. So out I went, with bow and spear. I made my name by searching the wilds for the wildest blossoms. No bandit nor machine could keep me from those precious petals. So what happened? Love happened, my sweet. My paramour frets too much when I venture out. So now I collect flowers for those without such bonds. Is it worth it? Being restrained like that? Of course. Freedom is sweet. But the embrace of my beautiful Theridine is sweeter still. <laughs> That's nice. Okay, metal flowers? These metal flowers, what are they exactly? No one knows. But some say they began sprouting 20 years ago when the machine started to go mad. Oh. Perhaps they grow from the tears of the sun. For he has many faces, does he not? Wrathful one day, cool and patient the next? Perhaps he weeps for our suffering when his anger breaks. Guys, that's really interesting. So, they started appearing just when Gaia died. So, he can't... Because I had a suspicion it must be Gaia who was leaving this... I, I don't know what this could be, guys. <laughs> I have no theories. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Whatever. Right, trade. Ah, let us haggle over this beautiful bounty. All right. I'm sure it's going to be shit, but whatever. <laughs> All right. So that's Mark 1 Metal Flowers, Mark 2, and Mark 3. It's a shame they don't kind of thank you for finding all of them, but whatever. Till we meet again, my noble Nora. Let's However, he's a very nice no. man. <laughs> okay, let's check. So, treasure boxes. See, oh, guys, see, this is better. This is what I thought the ancient vessel thing was going to give us, but check it out. So we're getting two purples, a thousand metal shots. See, this is more like it. <laughs> Much better, thank you. Okay, so what about that? I don't need... Well, it could be good. I'll check it, but it could be good. Right, another thousand. <laughs> another thousand, guys. Oh, we just made a shit ton of shards. Okay. Oh, gosh. I don't even know where to start here. I don't want that. Don't want that. Don't care. Uh, Dora, I'm going to sell this all in my own time before I uh, go for the Looming Shadow. Um, okay. Nothing else except for... No, all greens. Yeah, it's all bullshit. Yeah, all bullshit. I don't care about it. Okay. So, what's next? Machine resources. I don't need that. Wait, what's that? Mystery? Oh, yeah, that's the blue gleam, dude. Okay. Electro... No, eclectic collectibles. Artifact. Okay, artifact is what I think would be the Banuke stuff. Let's go down there, guys. This is a lot of fun, actually. 
Um, again, guys, I don't know who's <laughs> actually stayed behind to watch. You gotta remember this is you know this is after the ending, so it's only bonus. So whoever's here, thank you for you know sticking with me. I really appreciate it. Um, but you don't have to be here. <laughs> I really mean that. This is just bonus. You know whatever. Okay, what the heck is all this? Why would I want this? A dirty basket. <laughs> Guys, I don't know what this is for. This item holds no value except to the most eclectic of merchants. Would you get a trophy if you bought all of these, I wonder? Hmm, interesting. Okay, well... The new relics in the wilds, Outlander? This is her. This is the Banuke lady. You're looking for artifacts. Yes, but I'm no profiteer. Sun King Avad has named me an envoy to the Banuk. I work on their behalf, looking for sacred relics to return to their homeland, Ben Ur. I'm especially interested in wooden figures that are sometimes found near Banuk rock paintings. If you have any, I have valuables to trade for them. You said the king named you an envoy to the Banuk? Yes, I've been to Ben Ur many times, and the Wirek chiefs trust me. I help them maintain diplomatic ties with Avad. Some say they're a mysterious people, but their ways make a lot of sense to me. All you have to do is be the best. Doesn't matter if you're born high or low, man or woman. They respect skill, not some fool notion of heritage. I see the appeal. I wish more Karja did. Anything they don't understand, they call backward or savage. Mm. Tell me more about these Banuk figures. Simple wood sculptures made by Arnak, a legendary hunter who was exiled from Ban Ur for killing his chief. He left the figures near painted stones in places that reminded him of his homeland. Later, his tribe declared him innocent. Oh. Now they see him as a kind of wandering hero and want those figures back. I do what I can to help him get them, including trade for them. If you have any. Guys, is he still out there? Our Arnak, and he was innocent in the end. Can he? Oh, wow. Anyway. You ready? Let's trade then. Okay, so after I've traded all of these in, we're going to now read the uh, full story of Banuka and the vantage points as well. Okay, so. I name you my claim, and this one's punishment, I cannot confess, and this one's the vision, mother. All right, let's have a look. Come on back if you find any Banuk goods. That's a bit disappointing, though. I wish there would have been some additional dialogue if you found everything in one go. But it doesn't matter. I'm just moaning. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, what have we got? Uh, hey, the shards, I will not say no to. That's awesome. Okay, more mods. I, I reckon, guys, it's going to be green shitty mods. God. Yeah, it's all crap. Oh, wait, that isn't crap, though. What is this? Okay, I'll keep that. Not this one. Yeah, these are all shite. All the rest of these are shit. Okay, no worries. Excellent. All right, guys, we're going to get started. So from this point onwards, probably get a glass of water. <laughs> so I'll be with you in a second. But from this point onwards, I'm going to read out everything and we'll play the Vantage uh, Apoka Shitstorm guys audio as well. So I'll see you in a minute. Hey, guys, we are back. Okay, I just got myself some water. <laughs> so I'm going to do some reading now. And uh, listen, whoever uh, stayed with me, um, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And I hope you enjoyed the video, even though this is, you know, just bonus material that um, other people wouldn't really find that interesting. But I do. I think it's great. <laughs> All right, guys. So let's start off with... Um, what do I want to start off with? We'll save the Vantage till last. Let's do this one first. So this is a Banuke artifact, I name you. And here we go, guys. Tech took. Upon this peak, I name you my son. That which I could not do before my exile. Signak, chieftain of my Rarak, thought your blood was his. But the truth was clear as the colour of the sky. 
painted in your eyes and mine. As I wander alone in this foreign land, it is not Signac's death that wounds me, nor the memory of Illy, your mother, nor even the loss of snow sheathed Banor, my home, <coughs> but instead the silence that lay between us, who should have been father and son. I paint my mark here for you, and leave you this offering, though it will never touch the warmth of your hands. Okay, so we got this one here, and that will be my cl my claim. So that's the newest one we got. Tektuk. As the months of my exile turn to years, I have thought long on what kept me from claiming you. Such a call could only be settled in blood, by the death of Signac, our chieftain, or my own. It is true I feared this battle and his strength, but not as much as I feared its aftermath, the eyes of Illy, your mother, distant and dead, as they beheld the corpse of her mate. This I could not bear, and so I remained silent, ashamed. But fate is cold and cruel, and my fears came to pass despite me. I paint this mark in sorrow and leave you this offering, though it will never touch the warmth of your hands. Guys, this is so sad, man. Anyway, punishment. In my exile, I often envision your eyes, wide and blue, and dumbstruck, as the body of Signac, our chieftain, was laid before you. The Werak saw how I looked at his mate, Illy, your mother. To them, my guilt was as plain and sharp as a crack of spring ice. As they stripped me bare and left me to die on the glacier, the warmth of life departed me, but not the bitter will to hunt, to strive, to survive, perhaps to prove I needed no one, least of all those who wronged me. I am only at peace when I paint my marks and craft these offerings to you, though they will never touch the warmth of your hands. Oh, this is horrible, guys. I cannot confess. There is much I would confess to you, but one thing I cannot. I did not kill Signac, our chieftain, who claimed to be your father. That night I was alone in my tent, drunk with cold wine dreaming, as I always did, of Illy, your mother, and her sunset smile. You will never hear my testament, and my offering will never touch the warmth of your hands, but I paint my mark in the light of truth. I know what I am guilty of and what I am not. I hope against hope that in your heart you know the same. I just wonder, did he ever meet his son in the end, or maybe anyway it doesn't matter all right falsely uh, sorry the vision falsely accused exiled starving and cold i faltered this i confess as the death chills overcame me i lost will and purpose and felt the bottomless callousness of fate but then a, a vision i saw in my mind's eye an endless white plain with only a single figure waiting it was you and I knew in death, if not in life, I would see you again. When the chills faded, I rose with new hope. I paint my mark here for you, in anticipation of our meeting, and leave you this offering, though it will never touch the warmth of your hands. Okay, here we go, guys. Last one. Mother. It is only because you will never read these glyphs that I can write them. After a lifetime of longing, I spent only a single night with Illy, your mother, a memory that I cherished, but she rev reviled a burning coal of guilt. Oh, that's, that's horrible, guys. She, but she reviled a burning coal of guilt she carried in her belly. Oof, that's, that's bad. And so I wonder, was her guilt laid bare the night Signac, our chieftain, was killed? Did he discover the truth? Was she forced to defend herself? If only I had been there to stand between them, to actually strike the blow I was punished for. At least then I would have been her champion and the father you deserved for a single moment. I paint this mark with eternal uh, regret and leave you this offering 
though it will never touch the warmth of your hands. Oh, guys, this this is awful, man. <laughs> it's so sad. It really is. Wow. Anyway, all right, guys. So we're going to go on to the vantage point. So I'll play the audio and then I'll read out the entire Farrah thing. Automated Solutions. A pocket shit storm tour. Day one. Where better to start than at the end? Or where the end started anyway? Round zero. Where it all came crashing down. My career first. Then everything else. And I mean everything. Hey guys, just a quick one. You know what? I think I kind of messed up. This is day one. That's day 11. Ah, shit. Do you know what I should have done? I should have read day one first. Look, I didn't know. I'm just reading them from left to right. <laughs> I didn't know about that, so... Wow, guys. Okay, whatever. Um, okay, hi, Ma. Remember how ecstatic we were when I landed a job here? Aerospace control engineer at Faro Automated Solutions, straight out of Stanford University. Saturday, I was tossing a mortarboard. Monday, I'm an employee of the biggest corporation on earth. Starting wage, six times basic. Woohoo, that is good. <laughs> it was a dream come true, yours as much as mine. When I found out I landed the gig, I waited until graduation day to tell you in person. You were so proud. You hugged me five minutes straight, laughing and crying at the same time, saying over and over, onwards and upwards, the start of great things. I thought so too. It seemed as though nothing bad would ever happen to me, to us, ever again. But bad did happen, of course. More bad than I ever knew was possible. And while I can't blame FAS for making you sick, Metallurgy gets the credit for that. I can sure as hell blame Faro for the rest. But let's talk about the end of the world later. It plays a part in this story, of course. If I hadn't found out what was coming, I wouldn't be doing this leaving these time capsules behind but the apocalypse isn't the story i wanted to tell this is going to be about our family about us it's time to get going i've spent enough of my life in the shadow of this place i've got 11 more vantage spikes in the trunk of the sabara i rented and some pretty good ideas for where to sink them so let's get the hell away from this place and start sinking Guys, I know, crazy idea. I'm going to put this in timestamps, but I'm going to do day one first. <laughs> I don't know if this will make any sense, and it may not even work, but I'll try my best to timestamp these as day one, day two, day three. So you might be jumping around in the <laughs> description a bit, but um, I hope that'll help, guys. That'll anyway. Entire thing. So this will be set one. And is that our picture? Hmm, okay, I thought there would be a picture, whatever. All right, Air Combat Academy. A pocket shit storm tour, day two. My father guest lectured here. A 300 level military history course on the age of human air power. Might as well have been teaching medieval siege tactics. I was eight when he died. All right, normally they show the picture of Vantage in the bottom right-hand corner, but for some reason this doesn't have it. Okay. All right. Hi, Ma. You brought me here once to see Baba teach. I didn't know it at the time, but the class was like something out of the 20th century. He stood behind a lectern in a real space lecture hall. <laughs> I guess everything's going to be virtual now, but... Raising his unamplified voice to be heard by flesh-and-blood cadets seated in plastic chairs. This being 45 or 46, our air forces must have already been 60 to 70% automated. But the academy was still old school, literally. I suppose, the, I suppose the quaintness of the setting fit the subject he was teaching. The age of human air power, 1909, <laughs> wow, uh, all the way to a present. The cadets probably thought the question marks were wishful thinking or willful ignorance. Oh, okay, I get it. Sorry, I understand that. So, Age of Human, Air Power. Verts took over, didn't they? But anyway, anyway, from their perspective, the area of the human pilot was already over. But not for Baba. 
I can still see the medals he kept in that drawer in the bedroom. The inscriptions in Sanskrit. Touch the sky with glory, you said one you said one meant. Even as a comm commodore in the IAF, he'd kept he kept flying. He still remembered what it was like to sit in a cockpit with his hand on the stick and his finger on a trigger. And that's how he died, June 5th, 2048. So he died actually in battle, is that right? At the funeral, some metallurgic uh, international rep said we would be proud he died defending free markets. Even then I knew that was a lie. He died defending M International's claim on a tantalum mine. That's what he died for. And why stop the truth telling there? Really, he died because... Um, is that Mount International? I'm sorry, guys. Metallurgic? I don't know, whatever. Uh, M Int wasn't yet rich enough to afford a fully automated fleet. I think it's metallurgic, guys, because it wasn't cost effective to upgrade a military surplus razor wing with improved electronics warfare gear. He died because human combat pilots were just as obsolete as the crates they put them in, and just as expendable. When he spiralled into the jungle, our family crashed with him. For weeks, you couldn't get out of out of bed and then came the hospital me staying with neighbors even after you'd recovered even when he said all the right things and promised we'd be okay i didn't believe it something had broken between us i felt like an orphan and nothing seemed to matter anymore which is how i lived for the next seven years until it almost kid killed me oh dear i know where this is going guys because i've kind of been there myself Okay, so Colorado. Oh, there's the picture. My bad, guys. It's right in the bottom right -hand corner. So that's a picture of the um, Air Combat Academy. Nice. All right, Explorer Museum. Uh, I do remember this actually. I found near Mother's Crown. Okay, yeah, it's fine. Let's listen to that. The puck of shit storm tour, day three. I was 13 when I broke in and vandalized this place. Me and that kid, I think his name was Star. It was my first arrest. A real banner day for the Mahdi family. What a messed up kid I was. I've been there, man. I've been there. I understand. Trust me. Okay, Haima. Like me, Star was a problem kid. But he wasn't really smart enough to get into trouble on his own. I didn't tell him my real motivations. Just made breaking into the museum and vandalizing it sound like a fun thing to do. High on duster. I think duster's a drug, isn't it? I was only 13, but my combined interest in tech and drugs had already acquainted me with the basics of hacking security systems. I used a jammer to bypass a window alarm, and then I got to work. I toppled hollow exhibits, smashed dioramas, uh, yanked display panels off the walls and smashed those too. Christ. <laughs> I forgot all about star until he yelped about flying glass he was just standing there holding his cheek staring at me with big scared eyes whining about how this was crazy and i was going to get us arrested he was right about the arrest getting caught was part of my plan what but wrong about the crazy my one boy <laughs> one boy orgy of destruction wasn't some kind of drug soaked psychotic frenzy it was a calculated attack not on the museum, on Wyatt. You'd started dating Wyatt a few weeks before and I didn't like him. I wanted him gone. When he had him over for dinner, one of the many boring things he'd drone on about was how he served on the board of the museum and oversaw his technology, technology purchases. Anyway, as I was saying, Star was right to think we were going to get arrested. It went down quick. Star began screaming about how he was burning all over, and next thing I knew, I was face down in a mound of expanding foam. I don't know what that is, guys. The police bots never even warned us. Compared to Star, I got off easy. I've never been on the business end of a microwave gun. Okay, interesting. But they say it hurts like hell. I was still picking bits off that foam out of my hair a week later, though. Fines and damages came to 18 months of basic in income so it wasn't just shame that my actions brought down on the family but financial catastrophe too which is why the plan backfired i didn't push wyatt away 
I handed him a golden opportunity. He stepped in and paid the bill, and it was only another month or two before you got engaged. It's weird, but lately I've been dreaming about that night. I keep seeing that first projector I toppled, watching the hologram of a pioneer woman slew sideways and spin to the floor like a bowling pin as the emitter crashed over, a zap and a flicker, and she was gone. History shorting out, kind of like now. I wonder if anyone will survive to build museums about us. Wow. So this one is... Right, near Delvos Thurston, it was full of tall buildings and skyscrapers. Colorado Springs. A pocket shit storm tore day four. It's hard to believe Metallurgic International used to be headquartered in this dreary old ziggurat. Wyatt's office was on the second floor from the top. If Emin had a policy against workplace romances, he probably wrote it. I have read this out to you guys before, but as promised, I'm going to do it again. <laughs> so we're doing it all in order. Hi, Ma. Looking back, it's almost comical how much I detested Wyatt. I hated everything about him. His lumpy face, his bad skin, his always calm voice, his out-of-style suits, and especially his stupid cowboy name. I don't care how badly you want to assimilate. There is never any excuse for naming your kid after a gunfight. <laughs> Come on. Um, I couldn't believe you would replace my barber, a decorated combat flyer, with a corporate drone. So I made it as hard for you as I could. I was beyond cruel. I accused you to your face of only being interested in white for his money. Called you, my own mother, a gold digger and worse. Refused to attend the wedding, then I got myself arrested the night before just to cinch the point. It took me years to understand the obvious. Of course you married him for his money, for my sake, not yours. Before Wyatt, the job you were working didn't even cover food and rent. When you didn't get overtime, we slipped deeper in debt or went hungry. You literally couldn't afford to spend time at home, let alone pay for ch uh, childcare or rent a nanny bot. Meanwhile, your son was out of control, a truant and a thief, not even out of junior high and already a drug addict. If you'd only had yourself to worry about, I think you would have politely refused Wyatt's interest. You are no stranger to hardship, compared to what you went through getting out of Kolkata, Kolkata in 2037. Simple poverty probably seemed like a cakewalk. You knew how to survive. But your son didn't. I was headed nowhere, at ramming speed. You married Wyatt to save me, for the stability and opportunities his money could provide. It wound up working, but not as smoothly as you hoped. Before I could be saved, I had to die first. But that's a story for the amphitheatre. Damn, guys. This is insane. Right, Sterling Malkeet Amphitheatre. We got this quite recently. So we'll have a look at that. Found west of Devil's Grief. This was a corrupted zone. Anyway. A pocket shit storm tour, day five. The grey swarms open for turtle smash the night I OD'd here. Or so the police report said, anyway. I was 15 years old. When I woke in the hospital, two days later, your face was the first thing I saw. Okay, here we go. Hi, Ma. I don't remember anything about the concert, the band, the music, the crowd. I was too throttled on Skydive and Snake that night to dis distinguish the thunder of Bashkor from the roar of blood in my head. And then I ran across a pusher who was selling razor wing for eight bucks a tab. That's right, razor wing. A certain designer stimulant named after a certain late 30s fi fighter craft that our family had a certain unpleasant association with. So I declined the offer. He did the ominous portent and got the hell out of there, right? Or maybe what I did was buy four tabs and take them all at once. My goodness. Yeah, did that. According to the police report, I went berserk and attacked the pusher, then set fire to his stash. My goodness. And then went after the security drones that showed up. I didn't get far. 
The drones put 50,000 volts through me, <laughs> which wouldn't have been such a big deal if my heart hadn't already been hammering along at triple time. The shock flat out kills me. Oh, okay. The med bots came fast as they could, but the first glitched out and the second got hung up in the crowd. So I was dead for almost two minutes. And even after they revived me, my condition was touch and go on account of all the substances sloshing through my veins. When I came out of the coma, your face was the first thing I saw. Oh, I don't want to read this, guys. This is going to make me cry, but you'd been crying. Your makeup was smudged, dark lines down your cheeks. When our eyes met, I expected you to start yelling, and weak as I was. I was ready to yell back. Not even a coma could break my defiance. But you didn't yell. You quietly asked Wyatt to wait in the hall, then pushed your chair right up to the edge of my bed and took my hand. I wanted to jerk my hand back, but I couldn't. It wasn't the strength of your grip that stopped me, but the warmth of your hands, the gentleness with which you took mine. When you spoke, your voice was quiet, just above a whisper. When I lost your baba seven years ago, you were my only reason to go on living. Oh, stop it. This is painful, guys. Your gaze lifted um, Your gaze lifted to the medical equipment surrounding us, the tubes and blinking lights. You shook, our, you shook your head. Why do you live like no one loves you? Don't you realise that if you die, all my hopes and dreams, and all the hopes and dreams of your father, die with you? You reached and touched my hair, and like a thundercrack, I broke. Or maybe I was just snapping back together. I lay there, sobbing, for what felt like years. The whole time, you never took your hand away, and I didn't either. The next day, I agreed to go into treatment. I wish I could say I never picked up again, but as we both know, that's not exactly how things turned out. <sighs> Wow, guys. Anyway, right. Um, Denver Stadium, found in Devil's Grief. A pocket shit storm tour, day six. I was fresh out of rehab when we saw the metallurgists play the Hearts Wayfarers. The Emmett jersey looked pretty funny. Hopefully you're sorry. All right, guys. Here we go. Hi, Ma. So this would have been late May or early June. I was only a week or two out of rehab, still fr uh, feeling pretty raw, pretty jangly about sober life. You'd already gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mr. Gerson, that jerk principal who tried to block my readmission. I was looking at eight weeks of summer school to make up for all the courses I'd flunked, but I didn't mind. Without drugs, I didn't really know what to do with myself yet, so I welcomed the structure. The metallurgists were playing the wayfarers, and as usual, Wyatt had box tickets, but this was the first time I'd agreed to go. Hell, it was probably the first time I'd ever agreed to do anything as a family in retrospect. Uh, sorry, as a family. In retrospect, I'm surprised Wyatt was willing to bring his uh, he Helian, Helian, Helian stepson to a public event so soon. I'd seen teams slug it out on Hollow before, of course, but it, but it's seeing it, but. It seeing it in the real in the real was a whole other thing. The size of the machines, their speed, the way they bashed each other to pieces. It was intense. So it's robots versus robots. That's insane. All at once, my fascination with tech, which had kind of faded as I'd sunk into the drugs, came roaring back. When Homi Raman, the team's chief engineer stopped by the box at half time i was all over him blasting him with questions like a one boy press conference looking back it wouldn't surprise me if he took me to that game hoping to get me excited about tech before i headed into summer school or was it that you wanted me to catch a glimpse of corporate privilege it was always your dream that i'd end up in engineering or business well, there was plenty of engineering on display when Connor 12 scored with a with an 18-meter rocket jump. Guys, this sounds awesome, man. And plenty of EPs and even sea levels in the box with us when we cheered the goal. Yeah, it was a setup. You knew what you were doing. Always did. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's awesome, guys. Relate to all of this. Anyway, Monument Valley. So we've read this Eagle Canyon, Monument Valley, found east of Sunstone Rock. 
I remember, that's where the behemoths were, wasn't it? Anyway. A pocket shit storm tore day seven. I was three months out of rehab when we went camping out here. Wyatt went to sleep early. So it was just the two of us when we stayed up and watched the Perseids. After, as we talked about the stars and space tech, I suddenly knew what I wanted to do with my life. All right, guys, so, hi, Ma. It was August, summer school had wrapped, and I'd aced my courses. So I was heading back to 10th grade with a good head off steam. As a reward for my studies and my sobriety, you and Wyatt gave me a Fullerton Labs Astro Prodigy and took me camping to watch the Perseids at their peak. I was amped. Wyatt spent all afternoon struggling with a self-constructing shelter he'd bought for the ship until finally he gave up and built the damn thing manly. Well, the sleeping pods anyway. While we made a fire and cooked dinner, it must have taken a lot out of him because Wyatt was nodding off at dinner and went to bed soon after. As night fell, we sat and watched the meteors streak across the sky like fingernail scratches, marvelling at their abundance, laughing our delight. After an hour or so, you asked me to teach you the constellation, so I launched the Astro Prodigy and played Professor, spouting off about each star group as the drone magnified them. Later, I had Zoom I had it zoom in on the Odyssey, which was still being constructed in orbit back then. It was another year or two before they abandoned it. We could actually see the robots building it. <laughs> That's insane. Zipping across the hull like little fireflies. So I jabbered about that, which got me started on yammering about the robots that Pharaoh and other corporations, even Metallurgic, had begun sending up to mine helium-3 from Luna and metals from the asteroid belt. The more I spoke about space tech, the more excited I became. But I was getting cold too. Deserts at night are like that. No, or deserts. <laughs> anyway, so I sat back down next to you and we huddled under the camp blanket. For a little while we were quiet. I wanted to say what I was thinking, but it felt ridiculous. But then Wyatt snored explosively from inside the shelter and we giggled. <laughs> and our laughter seemed to make an opening for me to just go ahead and say it. That I, your delinquent son, who'd almost flunked out of high school, who nearly died of an OD at a Bashkor concert, wanted to be an aerospace engineer and make the sorts of machines we'd been talking about. Robots to gather resources in the solar system. Maybe even ones that could travel to other stars and colonise new worlds. You looked at me and smiled. Then that is what you will do. And then you looked up at the uh, night sky and said very plainly, as though it was a simple fact, you will write the story of our family across the stars. School started the next week and I never looked back. Wow. All right, here, anyway, next one, uh, Bridal Veil falls and if i'm not mistaken that used to be a bandit camp <laughs> or, it, or it turns into a bandit camp centuries later but anyway a pocket shit storm tour day eight holy crap that glitched out lifter that crushed your arm and clavicle back before you met wyatt that was in a mine back beyond these falls oh what a punk i was All right, guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, Ma. I can't believe I just stumbled across this place. I remembered your injury, of course. I just forgot that it happened all the way out here. This was before Wyatt, obviously, when things were really hard for us. I was 12 or 13. I already smoking duster every day. And you were working all the time, stuck on the job you convinced Myrtallergic to give you after they stiffed us on the death settlement. It must have been terrible servicing mining robots in dig tunnels for 1.5 basic. But it's how you kept us fed. When the lifter injured you, the foreman said it was your fault. Said the telemetry showed human error, yours. When you told me that the telemetry had been cooked, I didn't believe you. I blamed you for your injuries, same as the company. What a great kid I was. I didn't understand the situation at all. Denial of comp 
was a financial death blow. We were days from living on the street, which is why you push your grievance up the ladder, up and up, until finally you wound up in Wyatt's office. He ordered an investigation, which was the right thing to do. Though I've always wondered just how dispassionate his decision was. The investigation proved the telemetry had been tampered with and validated your claim, and the implants and cybernetics fixed you up good as new. By all appearances, it looked like everything that had gotten broken had been fixed. Hell, another six months, and you and Wyatt started seeing each other. So before long, even our poverty was fixed. What we didn't know, of course, what that you'd been poisoned. Oh, I do remember this now. Lubor 6 exposure from the solvents you used to keep robot joints clear. We were still years away from knowing the long-term effects, but the damage was done. You doomed yourself working a shitty job to keep me fed and clothed. And I can't even remember a single time I thanked you for it. Screw this place. Damn. Alright, Eagle Canyon. Ah, uh, found near Meridian. I, oh, I do remember this. I, I do remember this. This is when we first got to Meridian, I think. Alright, here we go. A pocket shit storm tour. Day nine. I was setting up my tent right here when Wyatt's call came through. I came as fast as I could, but you'd already slipped into a coma. We never got a chance to say goodbye. Damn, that is <laughs> Anyway, yeah, this, this cuts home a little too close to home for me, guys. But anyway, whatever. Right, hi, Ma. My plan was to go camping here after the Amos 15 launch. I'd been working OT for the past nine months, so I was pretty frazzled and figured I should get, sorry, I should take a weekend to relax before crunch started up again. I was setting up my tent when Wyatt's call came through. He said it was an emergency. I called a lift spin vert and made it to Denver General in less than 27 minutes. Oh, guys, I was too late. You'd already slipped into a coma. I didn't understand how that could be, but when I told Wyatt to explain, he just kept choking up, waving me towards the care station. So it was a hollow doc that broke the news. How you'd been diagnosed a year earlier, she didn't tell him, cause The adverse reactions to gene therapy and polymer vascular replacements. The six months of mobile dialysis. I couldn't believe you'd kept it all secret from me. Even at the height of crunch, I called you once or twice a week. So you just sat there listening to me enthuse about my latest project or complain about workplace politics. And all the while, you were dying? It didn't make sense. I marched back to Wyatt, cornered him and demanded that he explain. He said you hadn't want... Sorry, he said you hadn't want to distract me. That I was doing important work and needed to focus. You know, as though the latest Amos launch and the Palladium and Rhodium it bring back to Earth mattered more than the Ma who was already here. Wyatt kept saying how proud you were of me. He even parroted that onwards and upwards phrase of yours. He said I should get back to work. That I, uh, That's what you would have wanted. And, sorry, that he'd stay at the hospital and keep me informed. I didn't go back to work. I called in. It took arguing my way past two supervisors, a labyrinthian, <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that, guys, automated HR mini, a lab, labyrinth, labyrinthine, labyrinthine, automated HR mini, a human resources AI, and an anal defensive benefits executive to activate my personal leave, but I did it. And then I sat at your bedside for the next seven days. I kept thinking of the hospital after my OD at the amphitheatre. Kept thinking that if he came out of the coma, I wanted my face to be the first thing you saw. On the eighth day, they pronounced you dead. Oh, awful, guys, awful. After the funeral, I went back to work, but I wasn't really there. I kept telling myself to focus, that it was okay to be there. It was what you would have wanted, after all, onwards and upwards. But my work fell behind. When my supervisor called me in for an emergency review, I told myself to play it cool, accept the criticism and promise to do better. 
It didn't go like that. I snapped and shouted at him and then broke down sobbing uncontrollably. Two minutes and three second sec drones later and I was standing outside a Faro building blinking in the sunshine straightening my bunched up clothes. An alert to my focus indicated that I should go home for the day then report for a disciplinary review on Monday but I didn't go home. Another idea had risen in my mind already fully formed. I guess I'd already been thinking of doing it for a while. I took a lift spin to Pioneer Park, 10 minutes of asking around and a truth test to show I wasn't a cop. <laughs> that is insane and a truth test. Anyway, um, was all it took to make a connection. I went home with the drugs, started using and didn't stop. Duster, snake, skydive, overcast, no razor wing at least. I didn't take calls, didn't show up for the disciplinary uh, review on Monday morning. A friend stopped by and hammered the door until I answered it. When he saw what was happening, he staged a one-man interven intervention. I agreed to go into treatment, but I didn't harbour any illusions. Use of personal leave was bad, but use of psych SA leave? Career suicide. Sure, they couldn't legally fire me for it, but I'd been around FAS long enough to know they'd find a way. My career was over. I thought I was at rock bottom, but I was wrong, of course. I still had a long way to fall. Oh, guys, this is painful to read, man, because I, I can actually relate anyway, to all of this. King's Peak. Okay, this is day 10. <laughs> see, see what I mean? Anyway, let me just look at that picture again. Found near the mountain that fell. Oh, okay, okay. Anyway, this is when they're building Gaia. A pocket shit storm tour, day 10. So here's where I learned how the world would end. My second apocalypse in a year. Looks like there's a lot of construction going on now. Why would that be? Uh, because Gaia's being built there. That's insane, guys. Hi, Ma. I was surprised when FAS sent me out here. And not just because the meeting was going to be held in real space. I was surprised to discover that anyone at FAS still knew I existed. When I returned to work after treatment, HR informed me I've been reassigned to the Vantage project. It was exactly the professional death sentence I was expecting, the, the career equivalent of getting sent into a red zone without an environmental environment suit. Everyone knew Vantage was one of those doomed projects FAS kept around solely for the purpose of assigning dead-enders to them, especially head cases like me, who couldn't be summarily fired or for fear of parity litigation. Month by month, management would pile losers on a lost cause, then cancel the project and lay everyone off. A ship of fools sunk with a single torpedo. Ain't wrongful dismissal if it's downsizing. I had nothing better to do, so I spent my time studying the tech. Chip design wasn't my forte, but I knew enough to admire that what the engineers had accomplished with the Eternity chip, stored data was guaranteed to last 50,000 years or more without degradation. As for Vantage itself, the project was little more than a failed marketing plan. The idea was to promote the tech by burying unlocked Eternity chips at scenic locales around the world. Public domain time capsules where, where enthusiasts could cache date-locked data. The project got as far as developing the spikes. Portable drill ap appli uh, what? Applicators, applicators to sync the chips. Then stalled when grass heckle encapsulates came on the market and stole Eternity's Thunder. Anyway, I'd been at Vantage three weeks when FAS unexpectedly sent me out here for a real space meeting. Me, a dead-ender, working a doomed project, dispatched to a high-security FAS R&D site inside King's Peak. It didn't make sense. Security put me in a small conference room and told me to wait. It was downright claustrophobic dim lights, bad ventilation, more like an interrogation room from one of those 90s <laughs> cop feeds. But what really got my attention was the noises coming through the walls, the non-stop bang and clatter of construction bots 
building something deep in the mountain, something big. The door opened and some doofs <laughs> wearing FAS badges file in. I recognised one of them, Brad Andak, a military division replications engineer I met when I first joined the company, but I don't think he recognised me. He stayed at the back of the room the whole time, looking distraught. I was about to ask what the hell was going on when a woman wearing a hijab walked in. She didn't introduce herself, but she didn't have to. Oh, it was Sam Samina Ed Abadji. She's the one that was in charge of um, Apollo. Former lead archivist of the Odyssey. Architect of the entire Homer project. Not a global celebrity by any means, but if you grew up following the Odyssey project like I did, he knew her on site. Ebaji sat down and started asking extremely precise questions about the upper range tolerances of eternity chips. She's trying to find out the best way to store data for Apollo guys. That's insane. Then she asked me to speculate about the feasibility of various upgrade paths. The interview lasted maybe 10 minutes, whereupon she thanked me for my time and left. Everyone else um, filed out after her. Security came for me a few minutes later and escorted me to my vert. The whole way back to FAS, I kept trying to figure out, sorry, figure what had just happened. What was Samina Ibaji doing at a classified Faro R&D site, asking me questions about Eternity Tech? It didn't add up. By the time I landed, I knew I wasn't going to give up until I, I'd puzzled it out. The worst that could happen was I'd get fired. And that was going to happen anyway. It took a couple of days and some geo work, but I got a fix on Brad Andak soon enough. He was going to a different bar every night, drinking to the point of blacking out. I shadowed him until I managed to proxy his focus and dupe his net protocols. It didn't find anything strange in his financial records or media patterns. I was starting to think I'd waste my time. I'd wasted my time, sorry. Then I accessed his Dreambox account and found the journal he'd been keeping the past few weeks. Oh gosh, here we go. It was all there. How the world would end. My first thought was, well, at least my ma didn't live to see this. See, at least, she, yeah, I, I agree. I agree with that, guys. My second thought was that nothing mattered anymore, which made it pretty obvious that I should self-delete. Wow. <laughs> wow, guys, this is insane. All right, here we go. Lake Powell. I don't remember this, actually. Found north of Bright Market. Oh, I vaguely remember this. It was full of snap balls, <laughs> I think. Day 11. I came out here to die. But instead of overdosing at Wyatt's cottage, I went out walking along the water. I was standing right here when the idea hit me. And the moment it did, I knew I had to do it. All right, guys, here we go. Hi, Ma. I came here with a duffel full of drugs after I found out about the plague. I had a plan, a simple one. I figured I'd spend a few days getting high, then oh dear, on overcast. I guess I was still furious at Wyatt for aiding and abetting your silence. If everything had gone according to plan, my corpse would have lay rotting in the cottage for who knows how long. He would have needed to lease catastrophic cleaning bots just to scrape me off the floor. A skeletal middle finger from beyond the grave. But things didn't go to plan. For some reason, I went out walking before I got high. I trudged along the shore, thinking of all the times we walked and talked here. How I changed over the years. How you'd stayed the same. Whether I was a high schooler, jabbering about AP classes or a university student gossiping about my professors or a FAS engineer pontificating about payload yields, you were always there, always listening, always interested, and always encouraging me, of course, sparing me on, onwards and upwards. But now here I was, an abject failure, uh, standing alone on this beach, as all around me children chased playbots across the sand, sunbathers basked, families splashed in the water, or zipped past an old timey, zipped past on old timey boats, utterly oblivious to the mechanical terrors that would soon consume them. 
brief moment in the sun, doomed to end in horror and amount to nothing. All your love and devotion, all the sacrifices you made to support my success, what had that come to? Failure, and at such cost. We never even got a chance to say goodbye. But even if I hadn't failed, if I'd gone on succeeding, would that have been any better? The whole time I was clawing my way up the ladder at FAS, the company's military division was creating the tech that would end the world. <laughs> oh gosh. I served the same master. Success was a ladder to nowhere. It just took falling off and landing on the Vantage project to see it. I don't know why, but the irony of that had never hit me until I was standing on this beach. That it was only because I'd failed and had been assigned to Vantage, an abandoned time capsule project. So that's what these are. That's insane, guys. That I'd found out the world was ending. Irony? More like a cosmic joke. Why then, why then did the realisation hit me like an inspiration? I had access to the tech, I knew I could do it. Sure, in the end, it would probably all just come to nothing, like everything else. But for 50,000 years or more, whatever data I left behind would still be there. It wouldn't be much, but it wouldn't be nothing either. I went back to the cottage, stashed the drugs, called a lift spin in town, into town. If I was going to make an end of the world tour, I figured I might as well do it in style. So I leased a Sabara and rode it to FAS. So that's why these all scattered about. He just went out one night. Just thought, you know what, fuck it. <laughs> I'm just going to go out there and, you know, leave these vantages. I let myself into the lab, signed out 12 vantage spikes for testing, put them in the trunk of the Sabara, and the rest is history. It was less than two weeks ago. Feels like forever. Then I started the tour. I figured I'd come back here and pick up where I left off. Get high, then dead. But the first thing I did when I got back was incinerate the drugs. Really? All two and a half months of salary worth. Wow. So that bridge to oblivion has literally been burned. I don't know how I'm going to die, but it can't be like that. I know how you felt about me and drugs. However it happens, I can at least promise you this. I will die clean. I still have one last spike to sink. One final stop on the Grand Mystery Tour. I'll see you there. Oh, guys. This is insane. All right, here we go. So Bryce Orbital. So this is, I guess, where we did Deep Secrets of the Earth. Found near Sunfall. Day 12. As we watched the booster arc up into the night sky, riding a pillar of flame. You took my hand, squeezed it, and said, You have written the story of our family across the stars. Damn, guys. Hi, Ma. Last stop. After this, I'll have said everything I need to. It was just a routine launch, but for us it seemed... Sorry, but for us it might as well have been Apollo 11. It was my first payload, a seeker extractor with an upgraded propulsion system I designed. The vehicle was destined for M8-9282, an asteroid rich in ruthenium and tungsten? <laughs> I've never heard of those before, guys. A metallurgic claim as it happened. A family event through and through. So there we stood in the open air as night fell and the stars came up. And of course, I was thinking of that night years before, when we watched the Persids together and talked and dreamed of this very moment. You were thinking of it too, because when the booster launched, as it rose into the sky on its jet of flame, you took my hand and said, you have written the story of our family across the stars. Even then, I knew it wasn't true. The vehicle was headed for a rock, not a star. It was a routine launch, not some voyage of discovery, but my heart was too full to quibble. I just smiled and squeezed your hand back. It was the finest moment of my life, you and me, Ma, onwards and upwards, the start of great things. But after you died and I broke down, the meaning of that night changed. Oh, everything that had seemed wonderful seemed to turn rotten and false. It seemed false because... It was false. 
I'd never written anything across the stars. Sure, I'd hoped to work on a project like that, a deep space probe or a colony ship, but it never happened, and now that my career was over, it, it never would. And then, when I found out about the plague... Uh, is he talking about the Pharaoh plague? Um, the memory haunted me even worse. Because it wasn't just me who failed to write a story across the stars, you see. It was all of us, our entire species. All our innovation, all our tech, all our striving, and it came to zero. I've been looking up the stars a lot, Ma, and the only story I see written across them is that we are small and insignificant and will soon disappear with hardly a trace left behind. It's a hard story and I don't much like it. So I guess maybe what I've been trying to do these past 12 days is tell a different story. Not a big story written across the stars, but a tiny one written across the humble earth of the only one who, sorry, the only world we ever got to know. I have no reason to think that anyone or anything will survive to ever read it. But whether that happens or not, the truth of the story remains. That once upon a time, on a planet called Earth, there lived a boy named Bashar, so that's his name I think, who loved his mother very, very much. Oh, this is heartbreaking. Goodbye, Ma, I love you. Bashar Marti, son of Amal and sorry if I'm butchering all this, guys, um, by Hass Amati, stepson of Wyatt Mahanti, 24th November 2064. Well, hey, that's it, man. This, it's, it's done. This is it. Now, obviously, I'm going to post this video. <laughs> sorry, big worshipped here. I'm going to post this video after the Looming Shadow, right? So, in my case, now in real time, I'm a bit nervous to do the Looming Shadow, but it's got to be done, guys. This is going to be the very last quest in Horizon Zero Dawn. This was just an optional video, guys. If you weren't interested in watching this or you got bored during it, it's fine. I get it. It's not a problem. Um, fuck you. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Only joking, guys. Now, thanks very much for sticking with me. And um, I really appreciate you all subbing to the channel now, I'm not very good at saying goodbye and stuff like that, you know. I'm just not good at it. But I really appreciate you guys, um, you know, watching the playthrough or even a couple of videos, you know, liking the videos, etc. Comments. There's not many of us. Um, you know, I don't really get that many <laughs> people in the comments or whatever. But I do appreciate those who have stuck with me. I really appreciate it. But as for this playthrough... It's been awesome, guys. I don't know what the ending is yet. I will know very soon. But I just want to say thanks very much for sticking with me. And I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I sincerely hope you did. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you for watching the playthrough. And I'll see you in a new game, guys. Take care and goodbye. Goodbye.